You are not your behavior. It allowed me to find myself in unpacking my inner childhood wounds, in in looking for love, but I looked for it in the wrong places. What I see is that the people who have been working on themselves, they're more conscious about their environment as well. The key to emotional intelligence is self-awareness. This life is not about reading a book, it's about diving into yourself and experiencing the transformation. Like, subscribe, and share. Hi everyone. Welcome in a new Spontaneous Conversations. Today is a beautiful sunny day and you see me laughing and I will tell you in a second why. It is in this period of time that taking a deep breath, slowing down is crucial. Beautiful things may still happen if we don't do this, but they will be even more beautiful when we do take a breath and we go in more relaxed. Why I'm saying this, why I'm laughing, because my dear guest of today, Rahila Khan, who is located in South Africa, who is a dear friend of mine, we don't talk often, but when we do, it's a beautiful, deep, warm conversation. We talked for 40 minutes, and only then I realized that even if I had pressed the record button, it didn't work. And so we have to start over again. And that's why I'm laughing. And I felt guilty. And at the same time, something in me said, don't feel guilty. This is all meant to be. And Rahila took a breath and was like, well, it's not a problem. I'll just move my next meeting. And luckily that person was okay with it. And here we are. And we're not going to start over and do the same talk because this is spontaneous. So we'll just dive into this and see how it goes. But we are recording this time. Rahila, please tell us who you are, why you're here. And oh, um, Rahila wrote a book. And because I'm writing a book now, I really get it. What kind of a gigantic job it is and if you finish one it's even a more amazing job i have a lot of respect for that so let me start by saying that i really have a lot of respect that you not just wrote what you felt you had to transmit but you also managed to finalize it and publish it so deep respect for that and for everyone trying to do this it takes effort but it's worth it because you will hear in a few minutes a lot of beautiful things that are in this book but also are coming from this book like this talk and what you will get as insights Rahila up to you thank you so much Lotfi who am I today I am an author and this is my book titled Love Caution Living the Intelligence of Love it's available on Amazon, by the way. I'll put the link so, in, the, in the description. Yeah, I will. Thank you so much, Lotfi, for having me. Uh, thank you for your friendship. And, you know, at the beginning, we did a meditation, and that was so powerful, and I could just feel love. So it's interesting that we're talking about my book, and I feel so close to you, yet we are, you know, thousands of miles away. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So who am I? I am a facilitator, facilitating uh, emotional, spiritual intelligence. Um, I'm sharing also in my book, My Life's Journey, in how I discovered my why. You know, I believe this book would be so good for upcoming practitioners, for coaches, or someone who doesn't know their life's purpose, as it were. So I'm talking about my journey and how I discovered my why. Um, and how I discovered my why was finding my two-year-old, my inner child, in why she was so unhappy as a kid. 
Why was it that she always cried? And I left no stone unturned in discovering, you know, my, my healing path. And discovering my why is my contribution to healing. So what I learned is the thing we need to learn the most we teach. The thing we need the most we give away. So I give away healing and in turn I receive a lot of healing. And that is my why. And in living my passion so gracefully, so organically, I'm able to also create abundance for myself because the fair exchange is an energy field of money. So my focus as much as we need money is on money, but it's about creating abundance and prosperity, not only for me, for my family and all of humanity. What I also discovered in life, which I share in my book, is an equation which is called EQ plus SQ is greater than IQ. This came uh, to me in facilitating people from all walks of life, all nationalities, all race groups, uh, with pregnant moms, to unborn babies, to little kids, to adults of all ages. So I share all of this in my book with citing some case studies in my private practice, in my academy, and in doing the outreach work. The methodology that I use the most as a self-development strategy, by the way, I trained in a few, but the most outstanding one for me was the one by Brandon Bayes called the Journey Method. And this allows, it allowed me to find myself in unpacking my inner childhood wounds, in, in looking for love, but I looked for it in the wrong places. And nobody teaches us how to go inwardly and how to know thyself and how to see your essence is love. Through my experiences over a span of 40 years, I discovered the, the main missing ingredient in humans is love. Hence, I titled my book, Love. So very quickly, Latvi, I will talk to you about uh, the first one being EQ. I believe EQ uh, is so important in developing CEOs. So I develop CEOs of all ages because so the e stands for I'm emotion. The e stands emotional, for emotional quotient. Yes. Yes. So it's emotional intelligence. I believe that we need to become emotionally intelligent from a time a child is conceived in how we communicate as a couple to each other in what our love language is, because science has shown that every cell in our body has intelligence. The body has the infinite intelligence to heal itself. Like if you have a wound, for example, within two days, it will heal. So in a similar way, conditioning learned behavior and negative patterns of behavior are learned. We learn it from our parents. We learn it from our ancestral lineage. So the key to emotional intelligence is self-awareness. What is it that our grandparents taught us or what did we inherit from our ancestral lineage? What did we inherit? And if you can see in yourself and by observing your family members, that there's certain things that are not sitting right. It's out of kilter. We need to go back and examine it and see where did I learn to be so hard on myself? Where did I learn to be so judgmental? Where did I learn profanity? Where did I learn about drug addiction, for example? So these things were never spoken about previously, yet there was a lot of intelligence and wisdom in our ancestral lineage. But somehow, I think the communication skills were not there. So what we are doing, we're bringing a balance of what is there and what we still need to learn. And if we marry the both, it's a winning recipe. So with emotional intelligence, it's about understanding why we behave a certain way. We understand 
uh, our emotions better? What are the negative ones? What are the positive ones? How can we enhance this to communicate better? And that's how we grow our self-awareness. And then with spiritual intelligence, we learn more once we get the toxic emotions out, because we did this at the beginning, right? We are feeling a bit rushed, maybe a bit anxious and stressed. What did we do, Lotfi? We breathe. We breathe. And we exhale and breathe and exhale. And then what did we do? We started feeling love. We started feeling the energy that set the tone for this recording. Can you see that? So spiritual intelligence allows somebody to start feeling more. Everything is a vibration. Everything has a, is an energy frequency. So emotional intelligence leads us to this. And when we start feeling from our heart center, what happens? We open into gratitude. We open into unconditional love for our parents. Yes, they might have been hard on us. Yes, they might have scolded us. They may, might have, they might have done horrible things, but they didn't know any better. You are not your behavior. Once you learn this through becoming emotionally intelligent, you find your divine self. And when you find your divine self, you will see that part of you, which is like you said, our inner spirit shines. Our divinity shines, our God self shines. And that then becomes greater than intellectual knowledge because intellectual knowledge we can get at a click of a button on Google. But that does not make us emotionally intelligent and spiritually intelligent. You can gain a whole lot of training and learning in many disciplines, you know, in dentistry, psychology, gynecology, you name it, it's all available on Google, or in any textbook for that matter. So that even is my equation. I mean, even psychology, you can read a hundred books, but if you don't go inward, you will not evolve, you will not grow, you will not transform. You know, you're on point with what you're saying. Thank you for bringing me back there, because I talk about that in the book as well. So why is it important to come back here is that toxic emotion is an energy field which propels your negative behavior, as it were. Um, when there's an external trigger, something comes up from within you and you just lash out. And you don't know why. So that is why we're saying the key to emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So when you breathe, Assuming you triggered me with something. Okay, let's just say you didn't record this, right? And if I was not emotionally aware, then we'd be screaming. I'd be screaming at you. And say, How could you waste my time? What is wrong with you? You know, Lotfi, and I carry on. But what did I do? In that moment, I breathe in and said, oh, okay, it's fine. Because you're allowing the neurons from here, from behind the limbic part to come to the neocortex brain, and then you are calm. See how simple uh, self-empowerment techniques are? If only you are aware in that moment, so we won't have road rage and the boss screaming at you and stuff like that, because when you are calm, you're only going to attract people who are calm. When you're in love with yourself, you will only attract those who are in love with you. Look at how we met. We met through consciousness, a prayer that was put out for me that I will only meet like-minded kindled souls on LinkedIn. And through the networking, through the law of resonance, we met through another friend and another friend, and our network grows in that way. So we attract the, only the most amazing people to us and only the best kinds of experiences to us when we start clearing out the inner cobweb. So from emotional quotient to spiritual quotient to intellectual quotient, through my path of living my why, living my passion, living my life's purpose, in living love so graciously, I came to this next one, which is 
LQ, which is love quotient. And how do we find love within ourselves? You can only do that when we keep working on ourselves. Take all the self-empowerment techniques, take all the videos or whatever comes your way is meant for you. You know, uh, something else I want to share. We so quickly do this, right? So the moment we receive a wonderful quote or a video, and straight away we think, oh, this person will benefit from it. Hello, no, it's meant for you. You attracted it. So what can you do with it first? If there's a wise quote in talking about your emotions and creating balance, you do it first before you share it with someone else. It took me a long time to learn that. And this is why... Uh, take a deep breath see what it does to you and then you may even when you share it you share your own insight with it with your friend exactly. or so you're sharing even more wisdom or help them make the same self-reflection because you're saying hey i just had the self-reflection by letting it sink in for a moment yes and that is what i share in my book as well Every experience that I share, even when I'm teaching or giving a talk, when I share, I'm sharing from my own direct experiences um, with working with people, working with children. And in sharing my experiences, somehow somebody will benefit from it, uh, hopefully even from this podcast or reading my book. So everything shows up in, in allowing us to learn and teach. The thing I needed to learn the most was how to heal myself. What do I teach? I teach healing. What do I do for a living? I heal. I'm not the healer. I'm in giving you the tools to heal yourself. So I'm just a conduit, uh, channeling information or channeling wisdom in how you can discover your own innate potential. So what I share in the book and what I do is liberating humanity's potential. So going forward into the fourth industrial revolution, it is so important for us to be so aware of our thoughts, our emotions. Um, you know, something I want to share with you. Uh, I read this somewhere, right, some years ago, where this article stated that the humans are the worst pollutants on planet Earth because of our toxic thoughts, emotions, and behavior. And then you will get somebody who will come and talk to you about uh, climate change or how do you, how do you work uh, and, and save the planet and eradicate pollution? How can somebody who so polluted themselves promote cleansing of the environment, you know, <laughs> when your own inner environment is so cluttered? The outer world will reflect that. But when you're in peace, you will only experience peace. When your own inner biology, your own biochemistry is clean, your DNA is clean, you will only see beauty. So well, everything the that we... What I see is that the people who have been working on themselves, they're more conscious about their environment as well. Yes. Because... Yes. The outside world is a reflection of the inner world. So automatically, if you start working on yourself, you will also work on the outside world. Even yes. It doesn't mean you need to do grand desk things. It starts by not throwing trash on, on the street or cleaning up something or whatever, or allowing the flower to stay there. Go smell it, but you don't need to cut it and take it home. Let it be there yeah. for the person to see and have a big smile or smell it mm. and get this beautiful feeling. Mm. Might I add to that? You know, I'm also a community development worker. You will also read about my community work and my outward reach from this work of emotional healing and empowerment. We work with the indigent communities in the very, uh, like almost like slum areas where there's no water sewage or the, the people are extremely poor and therefore I'm saying what I'm saying we can't teach them to clean the environment they need to clean from inside first 
And I share that um, in in how the self development strategies when when we help them to clean out all the hurt and pain, the environment changed. You can't talk to them about air pollution or or pollution as it were with plastics and literally dirt when they can't see that. They don't get it. But what we found when we started doing the inner work in in the self-healing that we did over a span of 20 years, the project is still ongoing, um, in working with children and, and adults, when we started clearing the inner clutter of drug addiction and toxic behavior and all forms of abuse, something shifted in their environment. You can't talk to them otherwise about it. It, it it just goes over the top of the heads. So this is why emotional intelligence is so important, spiritual intelligence also in teaching them when you pray for yourself and you believe there's a greater force out there which we can call God or this infinite intelligence, their spiritual intelligence grows. And when I began clearing out the inner clutter, they began writing what kind of life they wanted in being well-educated, having better homes, guess what? That's exactly what they manifested. It has a ripple effect. So we can hold the space for ourselves in clearing out the inner clutter and then creating a better environment for ourselves, and then you pay it forward. And in consciousness, you get it. Everyone gets it because they can see how it's working. It's experiential. We can't always be talking about things. We can't always be talking about, oh, I'm feeling so angry. Oh, I have this illness. I, I, I'm I, just not in a good space. If that becomes your mantra, your life will become that. Our self-talk needs to change. So emotional aware, uh, intelligence or spiritual intelligence allows that to happen. Then the intellectual knowledge will come Because that student who could not afford the education eventually gets a bursary. And that student is put into university, but he's already got the emotional intelligence, the spiritual intelligence, and now he's acquiring the the textbook knowledge. And then he's learned how to love himself. Isn't that incredible? And this is why we cannot go somewhere and force a change. Change has to come from within. Yes. When people look at the world, they're like, oh, we should go there and solve all the problems or help. I mean, but they all often think, in, I'm going to go and do. Instead, I'm going to go and share and yes. inspire people to do. Yes. I mean, you know, you, you, you mentioned something very uh, important as well. It's about caring, sharing, and nurturing. That is a model I take into companies that I work with in working with HR because I feel instead of the hierarchy, the hierarchy of the organogram, it's better if it's a halo, a circle of caring, nurturing, loving, caring, and nurturing. And that's where the love quotient comes in because when we come with that energy field of loving, caring, and nurturing, everyone is equal. Everyone is worthy of love and caring and nurturing. And when we start doing that, everyone else learns it too, you know? And um, the environment changes because you let go of the judgment, the criticism, and then you reach out from a place of compassion, of empathy. How may I help you? How can I be of support to you? I see there's a conflict here, you know, how may I help you? Uh, What if we have to see a different perspective, you know, in a very loving way, rather than in a very authoritative way, like the parents. So I think for me, I'm bringing in that kind of consciousness, even into the workplace. It's, It's critical that we do that because if they are engineers, and, and and others who are gravitating towards building robots or looking at um, AI, I feel we need these humans who are more aware, uh, more highly evolved spiritually, 
to create these robots, so humanity can only benefit from it rather than destroying it. Um, so emotional yeah, and spiritual you intelligence. In, you get garbage out. Yeah, so I, I, in, I like that acronym. Yeah, yeah, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out, you know? Yes. So if we, if we don't clear out our inner clutter, can you imagine what robots would do with AI? Uh, it's the same in how somebody can be cloned by using AI and taking somebody's image and creating a fake someone. So we have to have very high levels of integrity in what we are doing for future humanity um, with kindness, with love, you know, small acts of kindness. Like it's like droplets of water. It grows and grows and grows until it becomes a massive ocean. So I think it's important for each of us to contribute in that way. If we can contribute rather than contaminate, we're going to get some way. Now, when we are not emotionally aware, what happens? We start reacting. When there's a trigger, you're going to react and you're going to take off with somebody. Whereas when you are emotionally intelligent, you will learn how to respond rather than react. These words are very important. That must become our self-talk. That must become our behavior. So when we look at inner transformational work, and this is what I'm talking about because I even cite case studies through our project that we did for over 10 years at the correctional facility in working with humans who dealt with crime. These are hardened criminals that we work with, and I share my firsthand experiences about it and how they were led to believe you are not your behavior. They were stunned out of their skulls when we said this to them. They asked us, who are you? <laughs> Telling us, because nobody ever tells us this. You are not your behavior. And through the inner work that we did, they discovered the latent potential where they could take the same energy of criminality in a negative way and change it into service, into service or servant leadership within the facility. And that elevated them and, and they had so much freedom, although they were in prison, they felt their souls were liberated when they were healed to a you know, certain extent. Of course, you know, Lotfi, this work is ongoing. It's a lifetime process work, you know? I feel we so can't become an overnight. Now, yeah. you're, you're doing this also with people in prisons because generally they're sent there because they did something bad. And most of them come out even worse because there is no healing taking place. It's just they're locked up with another bunch of people who also did bad things and they learn from each other more or less how can I not get caught next time and do things even worse I mean better for them perspective but not to be caught instead of what you have been doing and that's why I'm so grateful helping them transform and come out different people and from there going into communities maybe not all of them but I'm sure many of them go into their community and start transmitting the love the healing yes. energy, the the wisdom they got the insights from personal experience again just like we're teaching from personal experience they start doing the same mm -hmm. so a deep thank you for doing this work uh, thank you you know the sad thing is we also work with um, professionals who are there for fraud or manslaughter or whatever and it's interesting to see what led to that and so often it, it's very toxic childhood uh, and looking at a generational pattern again of how that is you know passed on and recycled so it was um, yeah it was huge learning for me as a facilitator and you know I, I learned so much humility from working with uh, communities, different communities, even even globally, because you get so many different perspectives to seeing a situation. 
and understanding how diversity works. People are people, humans are humans, and we are all one and the same if we take away everything else. When we see the God self, we see God in everyone. Everything is a divine expression of God. You are not your cultural beliefs. You are not your language that you speak. Because I cite a case study there where I worked with a Zulu woman and she didn't know English, but she wanted a session. And I did it in English, but somehow in consciousness, she got the work and she cleared out. That was like amazing for me, you know, a real wonder moment for me in, oh my God, I didn't even know I could do this, where you can talk. It's like music where you don't need to know the language or what instrument is playing, but you know it's doing something inside of you and you just take to it. And And I think this is what love does. This is what you know, the human potential can do when you're doing something good and how somebody can take to you that you can save a life, you can transform somebody in, in the simplest ways. And I think this is what gives me the greatest sense of fulfillment. And this is why I wanted to share this in my book. Um, because my whole life story is in here, but I'm also talking about my ancestral lineage and what I had to clear out to find me, as in Rahila. Well, if you take out the label Rahila, I, I'm just, I'm just light. I'm just, I'm just an energy field. You know, you become one with God in the universe. Then, then you're fluid. Um, whatever you do is your essence. Love is an essence. It's who you are, and and you. It's an energy field that others will gravitate, even animals will gravitate towards you. And you come into oneness because you find that balance. You'll find the wholeness inside of you that actually you don't need to fix anything. We believe so often that something's wrong with us. I always believe something was wrong with me, that I needed to be someone else. I always wanted to be someone else. Until I, I found... Then yeah. actually get to grow because then the self love can come in and then the real transformation happens. Absolutely. And when you come to that place, that is where your true potential shines. It's like that inner diamond that's there that's covered with mud. Your essence is covered in mud by all the cobwebs of the past, which you're unaware of. And as you start, like they say, wiping off the mud or peeling back the layers of the onion, you will discover like the yellow you are wearing, your divine light. Like you shining and radiating this light. You become a powerhouse. You become this, this beautiful, huge lighthouse for others. And they will be drawn to you and... And that's where the greatest healing happens when people are drawn to you and they seek something, they want to change. And that is where the greatest transformation happens because you cannot impose anything on anyone. Change only comes you know? within. Absolutely. So I, mm. like me, I'm a seeker of truth. I left no stone unturned to find out what happened in my parents' marriage. What was the fighting about the daily arguments about why did I feel like I didn't belong so in doing that I found my light and when you find your light you give permission <clears throat> for others to shine theirs and I think for me that's the greatest gift that I discovered um, through the work that I'm doing I don't even find it's like work it's it's so beautiful I feel like I can do this what I'm doing, my life's purpose 24 seven, because I so love it. And to see the transformation, physically see the transformation when somebody's biochemistry changes, you yes. know, it's That's like your whole world. Yeah. Your whole world comes alive. It's like the most amazing thing. And therefore they say love is the miraculous cure for everything. I so believe that. So 
that's that is why I dedicated all my time. It took me like over 20 years to think about the book, what shall I write? And then I lost a dear fellow practitioner and I promised him he had cancer and he passed away. I share his story in the book as well. And I promised that, you know what, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to write about conscious living, conscious dying because he had cancer. And I watched him doing both, how he celebrated his life and at the same time, we mourned his death. And we did it whilst he was living. And that awareness it's a very painful process, and yet um, it was such a gift, you know, to do both in tandem. And death is a very beautiful phenomenon when we can get past all the judgment of death. And and when, when you have so much love that you can be part of that process as well, it, it's just amazing. Rahila, I want to thank you so much for the sharing. We are running out of time because <clears throat> of what we said earlier. I don't know what what to say actually. I'm just I just feel a lot of gratitude. I feel to do another talk another day because there are things you touched lightly and they will be very valuable for people to hear and they may even encourage them more to read the book and to dive into themselves because this 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 life is not about reading a book it's about diving into yourself and experiencing the transformation and so this is me just dropping this and i want to thank you for thank your time. you so much and thank you um i'll put in the description where people can find you sure um if you have questions please put them in the comments or contact one of us directly uh, in the links you'll find how to contact take a moment now to let this sink in don't run to the next video or whatever you feel you need to do take a moment to let it sink in because there's a lot, a lot to learn from this, from this talk. Thank you again, Rahila. Have a wonderful Thank day. Thank you, Latvi. Thank you. Uh, it'll be, I'm so honored and privileged that you offered to record more. I will definitely make the time because um, I feel the messages have to be shared. Um, so I'm happy to dedicate time to talk about these things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a fabulous day. You too, everyone. A beautiful Infinite day. Infinite blessings to you and everyone else. Like, subscribe, and share.